All right, but before we go to break, let's go to breaking news happening right now. And Juan, we have mm -hmm. a pursuit, and Mike Rogers is not at the desk, but he is upstairs in SkyCal with more on what we're looking at here, Mike. Yeah, here we are, Pat and Juan. This is a pursuit by the L.A. Sheriff's Department. They are technically in surveillance mode right now, but surveillance mode with the, with the Sheriff's Department includes the spotlight, so he knows he is being followed here by the Sheriff's Department. This is a stolen vehicle. We're looking at a white sedan here. It looks to be a newer model Honda Civic. Now, we know that this vehicle was stolen out of the Montebello area. The Sheriff's Department, Temple City Station, picked it up. They chased it on and off the freeway. At one point, the suspect even got out of the car, got back in, took off again. That was after he nearly sideswiped a passenger bus. We also know that he's at least swapped paint, left some uh, scratch marks on some other cars as he was coming through the intersections here. So right now we are on Atlantic and Pomona Boulevard. He has been running lights. Uh, not sure if that one was red. That one might have been green or fresh green, but he is moving at high speeds here on surface streets. El Monte PD briefly involved in this as well. They have since backed off, leaving it to the Sheriff's Department who is overhead with their helicopter. So Mike, right. oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead I was saying, Mike, uh, you've been saying that this pursuit's been going on uh, freeways, also on surface streets. We're back on surface streets now. Um, how long was it actually on, on, on the freeway for? Has that been mostly on surface streets? Can you break that down for us? Yeah, I would say it's been mostly on surface streets. It was briefly on the 60 freeway, and then it got off. And then mm -hmm. when he got off, or I'm sorry, rather on the 60 freeway, that's when El Monte PD kind of backed off of it. Now, the sheriff's department, like I mentioned, were in surveillance mode, and then El Monte PD mm -hmm. got in it with just one unit. And because El Monte PD got in it, the sheriff's department reengaged in the pursuit. They have since gone back into surveillance mode because El Monte PD backed off of it. So that's where we're at right now as we approach Whittier Boulevard on Atlantic as he makes this right, uh, right hand turn here. Again, this car stolen. Now, I don't see the sheriff's spotlight anymore, uh, so we're going to try to figure out if they've turned that off or exactly what their situation is right now. Oh, there he is coming through our shot. Uh, just doesn't mm. have the spotlight on the car. But uh, yeah, more red lights as he's blowing through here, kind of going right behind these cars. Uh, the speeds have been about this the whole time. We've been about 40 to 50 miles an hour throughout the duration of this pursuit. Haven't really gotten much higher than that. Okay, so in mm. other words, uh, he was, wow, but he still is driving recklessly. Yeah. And you say he was on the, on the 60 bridge. Briefly, not enough time, I guess, for CHP to get in involved where they weren't involved at this point. And right now, there is no law enforcement agency following close behind him, but we do know the sheriff's department is still overhead. And we know you are, Mike. Yeah, that's and correct. They know the, you sheriff's, are. the sheriff's department is overhead. Yeah, there are sheriff's uh, deputies in the area, just not directly behind mm -hmm. uh, the vehicle here. And, you know, the sheriff's helicopter, we were listening to him a little bit earlier, asking the Temple City Watch Commander if the units could re-engage because, uh, because of his reckless driving. The, the, what, the uh, helicopter basically said, look, we don't think that the surveillance mode is working. Let's oh, get what? some units back in this. Now as we're kind of just going back and forth down yeah. the street here, uh, the watch commander over at Temple City said, no, we're going to stay in surveillance mode, and that's kind of what it's been since then. But not really entirely sure what he's doing, just kind of going back and forth. If he's trying to taunt law enforcement or just waiting for them to catch up, it's oh, kind of unclear yeah. right now, guys. He's, he's just going loop-to-loops here. Yeah, exactly. Driving in the middle of the... Okay. Oh, stop it oh. now. Driver's door's open. Yep. Looks so like he's, he's done this before. He's pulled up to a curb here, gotten out, kind of walked around the car and gotten back in. Now we see the sheriff's helicopter uh, spotlight. It, it's kind of weird what he's doing. It's almost like he's looking for something in there. You kind of see him bending over a little bit. Uh, so it's not totally clear what exactly he's doing down there, but he is he's still getting running out. from law enforcement here. Yep. Well, oh. he's, well, he's walking quick... away now, Mike. Is that a yeah, hands up? Yeah. He's that? just walking down the street. And now as he walks back, he gets back in. I mean, this is what uh, he did before. Yeah, uh, here we go. Uh, so now we're back into the car. That's exactly what he did the last time to the sheriff's deputies that were trying to get him to stop. And you know, because they're in surveillance mode, there's no deputies close enough to take him into custody when he does this. So look mm -hmm. at that. He's got free roam of the street. Now as we're reversing backwards down the street here with the path, with the driver door still open. Well, no, you know what, I'm, I'm thinking um, if they could get, now he's running away, close the door. Looks like he's, okay, now he really has bailed. So this might like, be yeah. his last, he might be actually done here now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and you still don't see any law enforcement in the area on the ground? Not, not yet. I wanna, I'm going to stay with him for just a minute to see where okay. he goes. But no, we haven't seen any. Kind of as I look out the window here, I don't see them responding just yet. Now, uh, they've had a little bit of a, a time to get here because he you know, played that game where he was in, he was out. All right, now he's got hands up. So let's see if he's just going to end this game here. But look, we still don't have any deputies 
nearby. You've got the sheriff's helicopter overhead lighting him up, but you know, he's got no one to surrender to right now. And you know what? You're hoping this guy just doesn't run and get back in the car and take off again. Let's see what he's going to do here, Pat. Well, right. I mean, look, he put his hands again. up like he was getting ready to surrender. Right. He put his hands up like he was getting ready to surrender. And he's like, well, no, I guess if no here. one wants me, here we go. Let's get back in the car. Oh. Oh, wow. All right. Now, this is, uh, and, and now he's pulling off again. <laughs> yeah. So what? Exactly. What? I mean, these are the pitfalls of surveillance mode, you know? I mean, these, the, the, Law enforcement, we've got one unit coming from the north. Here we are. So now we've got one unit in the area. But let's see if the watch commander is going to let them chase him. Now that he's back in the car, are we going to let this be a full blown pursuit or are we going to go back into surveillance mode? We'll have to see. So when all this was happening, Mike, we were in surveillance mode, watching him get in and out of the car, jumping the wall, putting his hands up yes. as basically giving up. But as you said, he had nobody to turn himself into, right? He was turning him. Exactly. Maybe was he, he looking up? The, he was turning himself into Mike. In, into Mike, or I mean, to the helicopter <laughs> yeah. above. You know, I'm being funny, yeah, but I mean, you know, I think the, the the police helicopter, the law enforcement helicopter, can be pretty deceiving. You assume that if there's a, you know, a sheriff's helicopter there, that there's going to be someone to turn yourself into, and that obviously was not the situation here. Really close, right there next to that car. And I just kind of want to point out, also, you can see some of the damage right here on the right side yeah. door. Uh, of the Honda, and that may be from one of the collisions. It looks like the front bumper, maybe the mirror also has some damage as well. Well, can you imagine if uh, this, whoever this, the, the vehicle mm -hmm. belongs to, if they've watched yeah. this and watched their car stop with no one in it, with the perpetrator out of the car, thinking, yeah. well, yeah, okay, somebody could at least take the vehicle if law enforcement had been there to, to at least secure the yeah. vehicle that belongs to someone else. So we should, well, we have our, our um, bumper that says stolen vehicle pursuit. And this is exactly right. what this is. This car does not belong to this man who, um, Mike, you've been watching this for how long now? Uh, we've been overhead just, we got overhead right before we came on the air, but it started just around, uh, just a little bit after 9.15, about 9.19 is when the Sheriff's Department uh, picked this up. So as soon as we heard it, we got in the helicopter and we came right here. So, uh, you know, we're, we're mm -hmm. coming up, you know, maybe about half minutes. an hour of them chasing this now. Yeah, about 30 minutes. And what a terribly missed opportunity, Mike. You were saying in surveillance mode, police officers weren't nearby. They're watching from the air. And, and he must have thought in, in his gut that uh, they were, closer than they were and, and he got out of the car as we saw there he put his hands up jumped a wall went into a, a neighborhood or into a front yard a backyard there they lit up that backyard as well he threw his hands up as well but again nobody in the area uh to to bring him into custody and that could have even possibly but now we're losing our picture uh, for just a moment oh, okay we it have is. it back it's now back. Uh, is that yeah that's him making that left turn one right there that's that white right car there, right the there car. you know i was even thinking at the time that well, they could have done a spike strip. Right, right. Not, you but know, necessarily they, want to damage they, the yeah. car, but he couldn't have moved, you know, gotten, mm -hmm. gotten back in it and started driving away. They just weren't close even, enough, right? No. So, Mike, describe for yeah, us. And you know, a, it, okay, we, now, all right, now oh, they're behind. Oh, it looks behind. like we have actually units behind him now. Look at that. Now, is that Temple City there or who go. is that? Now we've got some units. Or is that the Sheriff's I believe Department? this might be units from the East of... Yeah, I believe it's the Sheriff's Department, and I think it may be their East L.A. units that are now involved in this. And I just was going to, you know, talk to you guys about the differences between the tracking modes and surveillance mode yeah. between LAPD and the Sheriff. You know, when LAPD goes into tracking mode, they lose the light on the helicopter because the whole idea is for the person not to think they're being chased anymore. You know, the Sheriff's Department, their tracking mode, they leave the, the night sun on, which kind of doesn't give the suspect that, you know, false sense of of security thinking they're not being mm -hmm. chased. So that's, I think, why that guy got out expecting to have to surrender. And then obviously he didn't because nobody was there. But now we've got sheriff's units right behind him. They're still keeping their distance a little bit here, uh, but they are in the area now. And then, speaking of area, Mike, are we pretty much staying in the same area now? Or is he kind of uh, venturing off uh, a little farther away from where he was earlier? Yeah. You yeah, you know, this car was stolen out of Montebello. We're not terribly far from there right now. Mm -hmm. He's kind of just been going back and forth on surface streets. Uh, earlier, before we got over the scene, they were up near the uh, San Gabriel Valley Airport, uh, just north of the 10 freeway there. And then he came south on Tyler, uh, then went westbound on the 60 freeway and got off. So he's not gone terribly far away from where this whole thing began. And we didn't necessarily see that, but we know that he... This car could have been involved in some kind of accident, right? I mean, you did say that he, right. he sideswiped a car. Or a More bus, right, Mike? What did you say? Yeah. Go ahead. 
Yeah, he came close to hitting a bus. The sheriff's helicopter, when they were talking to the Temple City Watch Commander, uh, asking for permission to have the units re-engage because tracking mode wasn't working or surveillance mode wasn't necessarily working. He had mentioned that the suspect vehicle almost collided with the passenger bus and then did very minor damage to two other vehicles. The sheriff's helicopter described it as uh, maybe some scratches on those other vehicles. So not any major collisions here, but enough that the sheriff's helicopter had asked if they can re-engage this pursuit because of the way he was driving. You know, and we were able to see evidence of some of that on the right side, the passenger side, where you saw the dent in the car, or in the uh, door rather, and some damage to the front bumper. And we noticed he has not gotten back on the freeway. We know he was mm -hmm. on the 60 freeway, but for the last 10 minutes or so, he has been on surface streets for a while, just sort of driving back and forth, really in circles. And yeah. at one point, we did see him uh, wanting Mike yeah. get out of the car, not only get out of the car, but walk away from the car, run away from the car, basically, and jump over a wall. And it's almost as if he was waiting for somebody to come and, and collect the car or collect him. But when nobody showed up, he just got back in the car mm -hmm. and um, continued on this pursuit. But at least we know that the ground units are back uh, behind him. And we still have the uh, sheriff's department helicopter overhead, right? We're looking at the picture on your right hand side of your screen yeah. is when he stopped the car, opened the door, and did we see him get out yet? Come for on, a second, oh, it comes. looked like he did throw his arms up right when he came out. Right there, he's kind of like giving up his, you know, putting his arms up, wait, I guess waiting for something to happen, but but nothing happened. Then he jumps the wall of that mm -hmm. uh, home there just on the right of your screen and then ran back to the car a couple of times, the second time eventually taking off. Well, they're really close behind him now. Um, yep. And you wonder, did and they re-engage? as well. Oh, he has? Okay, we can yeah. tell. Yeah, he's now. Yeah, we're slowing down miles a little bit. In my, oh, he's got a hand out the window. Yeah. Yeah, but you've you've seen this before. And my pilot Chris was just telling me, no, my pilot. Yeah, right. My pilot Chris was just telling me we've got a CHP fixed wing aircraft oh, he's overhead. Pulling over. So we're gonna position SkyCal around here to get around this tree. But yeah, he stopped again. I believe he's out of the car. Yeah. Uh, doors open. On, and on the ground. Well, now he's got someone to surrender to, so he'll okay. get on the ground now. Hands behind his back too, Mike. He's not wasting any time this time around. But they're waiting to approach. Yeah, it's almost like maybe to. he's done this before. Yeah. You know, they have to, um, right? Uh, Mike, mm -hmm. if you could describe what's going on right now, they're going to give it, assess it for a while, right? Before mm -hmm. just approaching. Yeah, right. Not knowing if he's, you know, possibly armed or anything like that. Or if there's anyone else in the car, right? Ye Right, exactly. They don't know anything about this suspect. All they know is the vehicle is allegedly stolen. So they're going to make commands. And honestly, you know, he probably jumped the gun a little bit here by immediately getting on the ground. They would probably, ideally, rather him walk further away from the car, right? Especially a guy that's been jumping in and out of the car. They would have rather him stay up and they would have given him commands to walk back to their patrol vehicles right. so that he's not right up against the vehicle. Because now they have to worry about that as they approach him. Is he going to jump back in the car? Uh, you know, like he's done so many times. So uh, even though, you know, he probably thinks he's complying and doing things the way he should be, that's probably not what they wanted him to do. And that's probably what they're telling mm -hmm. him, right? Would they tell him possibly to... Roll over roll, or something, or right? Back, roll away from the car, yeah. Inch back to the, uh, to the vehicles? Yeah. Yeah, we've seen that before where they, mm -hmm. you know, they, the suspects think they, you know, they're going to do what they want to do and then the, the deputies will give them the commands to actually get up and walk backwards. It really just depends on kind of who's running the show down there and, and what they want. If they've got enough deputies, which, you know, at this point they, they definitely do, they can just put uh, together what they call an arrest team and, the, you know, you'll see four or five deputies walk up to him and take him into custody and you probably see another set of deputies walk up on the right side of the car and clear the vehicle to make sure that nobody else is in there. You know, if you're looking at the, uh, the distance from here, I mean, it certainly looks like mm -hmm. they could do that if they came out with their, their weapons drawn and even rushed toward this guy. Yeah, and look, you, you've even got a, a deputy right here behind the tree trying huh? to see He's in. Oh, so look, they did. Okay. They told him to get up. Probably lift his shirt up or something next right now. Now he's walking back. Okay, well, yeah. now he's complying with what they've told him. And just, just like knees. you were saying, yeah, yep. get away from the car. Yep, they told him, don't lay down. Yep. Stay on your knees, put your hands above your head. Easier to cuff him to and a here comes the they go. Team. They got him. All right, that's a code four. All right, well, it is, and then we'll just clear the vehicle here and make sure no one else is in there. And so far, we only heard that that one person was in the car, right, that we know of. 
Yeah, correct. We never heard anything about another uh, passenger. The airship did ask that, the units that were yeah. chasing, uh, well, if they thought anybody else was inside. You know, so they played it their way. Then um, they let this guy think that no one was around, but they still had um, eyes on him and followed him long enough where he finally said, okay, I can't get away. And they pulled him over. Mm -hmm. and. Well, he pulled over himself and then just got out of the car. So you have to think that was critical thinking on the part of law enforcement to handle this the way that, that they did. Yeah. Even though it looked, it looked so precarious one moment when yeah. he jumped out of the car and, and jumped over that wall. It's sort of like, hey, where is everybody? But A very interesting yeah. and different yes. type of a pursuit of a stolen vehicle out of Montebello. Uh, the driver going round and round freeways and surface streets uh, before eventually pulling over there and... Um, now in the custody of the officers who have arrested him.